Hi, I am Iqbal Imam from Aligarh Muslim University, Aligarh. My specialization is ecology and remote sensing and GIS. Today we are going to cover a model uh, entitled is aerial photography and photogrammetry. Let us start with the aerial photography. Aerial photography is acquisition or acquiring of the information of a object or earth surface with the help of a camera fitted in aerial platform. The concept of aerial photography started way back in 1858 when aerial photograph of a village located in France was taken by Nader. Nader took the help of air balloon fitted in a basket and taken the photograph of earth surface. In the very beginning, aerial photograph was also taken by fitting tiny camera with a birds like pigeon. Aerial camera fitted with pigeon was generally used for the reconnaissance by the military people. Aerial photograph became more famous during the World War I when fighter plane was used to take the aerial photographs of an area. In India, the concept of aerial photograph started in 1922 when aerial photograph of Agra city was taken. Later on during 1923 to 24, forest survey was done by Survey of India. Aerial photography has become now advanced and aerial camera is fitted with aircraft also. The aerial camera fitted with aerial platform is very specialized type of camera. It is very hardy, it can bear the shock, it can bear the high speed of the aircraft and it can also bear the weathering condition. It may provide results with a minimum distortion. Now we may discuss about the types of aerial photographs. Aerial photographs are of two types, vertical air photographs and oblique aerial photographs. In vertical air photograph, the camera is on top of the object making 90 degree with the earth surface. This type of aerial photography provides a photograph with minimum distortion. Geometrical correction is very few in this type of photographs and for geometry measurement this type of photographs are taken. Then come to the oblique photographs. Oblique photographs are two types, high oblique aerial photographs and low oblique aerial photographs. In low aerial photographs, camera is tilted up to 30 degree. It covers the area more than what it is covered in vertical aerial photographs. Whereas high oblique area photographs is covering larger area and horizon can be seen in high oblique area photographs. The benefit of high oblique area photographs is that it covers larger area. However, the size of the objects are small. Generally, for geometrical analysis, oblique photographs are not considered. For geometrical analysis, vertical air photographs are taken. Now come to the different types of camera used for aerial photographs. The aerial camera may be single lens, it may be of multiple lens, it may be of digital camera or it may be pan also. When single camera is fitted, sorry, when single lens is fitted with a camera, it is known as single lens camera. When more than one lenses are fitted with a aerial camera, it is known as multiple lens camera. Panchromatic camera. In, pan in panchromatic camera, generally prism are used and it is used by generally military people to have the photograph of an area. Digital camera, with the adv advancement now digital cameras are used where CCDs are taken as a storage concept. At present, the most advantage technology in aerial photographs is the digital use of digital camera. Let us have the concept of camera filter. Camera filters are used to filter some of the dist distortion. Generally, it is glass made or gel made kept in front of the lens. The concept of filter is based on primary color as well as secondary color. The concept of primary color is that it has 
combination of red, green, and blue. It is also known as adaptive color compose con concept. The secondary color concept is the combination of cyan, yellow, and magenta. It is also known as subtractive color concept. Different types of filters are used in a aerial photograph camera. These may be haze filter, these may be yellow filter, another type of camera filter is band pass filter and polarized filter. So, these were about the different filters used for aerial photograph camera. Now, come to different films used for aerial photographs. The films may be panchromatic, it may be color film, it may be black and white infrared, it may be colored infrared and it may be multicolor band. The panchromatic film produce photographs in black and white, whereas the black and white infrared also produce photographs in black and white, but in a different manner. The colorful infrared produce aerial photographs having colorful color, color infrared concept. Multi band photography produce photographs in a different band. For example, red band, green band and blue band. This is all about different films used in aerial photographs. Now have a little bit, now we must have little bit concept about the aerial photographs. The aerial photographs are having information written on side of the photographs. These information may be about the flight line, about the nadir, nadir, about the date of the photography, about the platform and these all information are written either on the top of the photograph, aerial photograph or below the photograph or left or right like that. These all are these all information are written on the margin. While doing the aerial photography, area is overlapped. The concept of overlap is that that camera should not leave any area untouched. Overlapping is of two types: end lap and side lap. The end lap is having the overlapping of 60 percent, whereas the side lap is having overlapping of 30 percent. Overlapping is used so that no area can be left on photographs as well as these are also helpful in producing the stereoscopic vision of a area. Stereoscopic vision of an area is measured with the help of lens stereoscope and mirror stereoscope. With the help of stereoscope, we may have the three dimensional view of an area. Then come to the scale of the aerial photograph. The aerial photograph what we have in our hand is representation of the earth surface, but it has a certain scale means the photograph the size of the photograph is with reference to the real world real world. A scale may be of following types, ratio scale, graphical scale and equivalent scale. In a ratio scale, the scale is written by for example, 1 centimeter equivalent to 1 meter. In graphical scale, the scale is given in a very graph manner in a form of line for example. In equivalent scale, the scale is written like 1 centimeter is equivalent to or equal to 10 kilometer for example. Then on the basis of a scale, photographs can be also classified into two. 
the large scale photograph and a small scale photograph. In large scale photographs, the size of photo is larger, whereas in a small scale photographs, the size of objects are smaller. For example, in large scale photographs, the scale may be 1 is to 250 hundred meter. Whereas in a small scale photographs, the scale may be 1 is to 50,000 centimeter, for example. The distance between two objects can be used or can be measured by different methods. One method is to measure the distance between two objects on photographs divided by distance measure on the earth surface. This will give you a scale. Another method is that have the focal length of the camera divided it, divide it by the altitude. The third method to measure the scale is f divided by capital H minus a small h, where f is the focal length of the camera, h, capital H is the height of the aircraft and a small h is the height of the object. Then there is a relief displacement concept. Relief displacement occur while doing the aerial photographs. When an when photograph of an object is taken, the object is drifted from its original position due to the certain reason. The reason may be the speed of the aircraft, it may be due to the camera, etc. Et but this image displacement is also helpful in measuring the height of the object. So, on one way it is a distortion and on another way it is a measure to help the help to measure the height of an object. Relief displacement can be measured like this h is equal to a minus e into d, d a minus e into d divided by r. Now come to the elements of aerial photograph interpretation. Whatever photographs are taken by aerial camera, it is very important to identify the object. And for that different elements are used and these elements are size, shape, texture, pattern, association, tone and hue, take size as an element to interpret the aerial photograph. Size is having either volume, length or circumference. With the size of an object, we may say about the identification or with the size we may identify the objects found on the aerial photograph. For example, a small sizes building may be the residential area, whereas large sizes building may be industrial area. Then come to the shape as an element for aerial photograph interpretation. Shape gives a great idea to interpret an aerial photograph. The natural things are having irregular shape, whereas natural things are having shape in the form of rectangle, angle, circle like that. For example, a road may be having a road may be having very straight type of structure whereas a river may be having very irregular type of a structure so on the basis of shape we can identify that this is a road and this may be river then come to the texture Texture is also very important element which helps in photo interpretation. 
a smooth texture may depicts about the grassland whereas a smooth whereas the rough texture may give an idea about a forest however both may give a similar type of photographs in S in pattern the arrangement may be even or very arranged manner or we can say even or irregular when the arrangement is even you may say that it may be for example it may be orchard or plantation when it is irregular you can say that this vegetation is natural forest then come to the shadow shadow is also very important element for interpretation of aerial photographs with the help of shadow not only we identify different objects but also we can measure the height it is also helpful in detecting the changes if there is a construction of a building if for example 10 years back and if if you have raised the floor the shade of this building may differ association and sight is one of the very important element for photo interpretation with the help of or combining the association and sight we may be able to identify an area or an object it is very helpful when there is a confusion or there is a no clear cut idea about an object for example if there is a large size of shed and two parallel lines are crossing that means it it may be railway station suppose there are large size of chimney and large size of buildings are there that means that area may be industrial area where is the site is also important for example if there is a sea shore and some structure is there there may it may be dockyard now come to the tone and color as element for photo interpretation in black and white aerial photographs tone is very important similar type of things may give different tones for example there is a forest dense forest may give different tone whereas less dense forest or scrub land may give different for tone similarly grassland may give different tone the dense forest may give darker tone whereas grassland may give light color tone similarly color is also very important when we are talking about the color aerial photographs the different tones of color may give in an idea for an example if you are having a color full photographs of an forest area the dense green color may be tree whereas less green less green color may be grassland or light green color may be grassland for example for as an for as a for as an example these all are about different inter elements which are used for aerial photographs interpretation aerial photographs are very useful when we are talking about remote sensing with the help of aerial photographs you may be have you may be able to develop land use land cover with the help of aerial photographs we may develop forest ground on density it may be also helpful in developing the stock map of the forest with the with the help of aerial photographs we can analyze the urban development pattern with the aerial photographs we can also see the change detection with the aerial photographs we can also see the climate change it is also helpful in military intelligence it is said that the world war first was very much depending on the aerial photograph now we conclude that aerial photographs and photogrammetry is one of the very important aspect of remote sensing and gis the aerial photographs started with the concept when the balloon was used very first time in 1858 by nader in france he took the aerial photographs of a village located in the france 
aerial photographs can was sorry aerial photographs was also taken by fitting a small camera in a bird that is pigeon aerial photographs become very famous during the world war and it is said world war first and it is said that the world war first was won with the help of aerial photographs aerial photographs is a combination of various precise ca camera the platform the flight techniques and the aircraft used for this purpose there are various types of camera used in aerial photographs that may be black and white it may be colored it may be with infrared it may be color infrared and it may be multicolor also various films are used in aerial photographs the films may be panchromatic colorful or with infrared or color infrared various filters are also used to improve the aerial photographs these filters may be haze filter it may be yellow filter like that the photographs are considered aerial photographs are considered to be of two types vertical aerial photographs and oblique aerial photographs vertical aerial photographs is taken when you are interested in the geometry of the aerial photographs whereas if you want to have the larger area to be covered by an camera oblique aerial photographs are taken in high oblique aerial photographs the horizon is seen whereas in low oblique the area covered is less than the high oblique aerial photographs can be also useful when you are interested to see the three dimensional for that purpose overlap photographs of a same area is te taken with the help of lens stereoscope or mirror stereoscope you can have the stereoscopic vision of an area with the help of aerial photographs you can also measure the height of an object that is very important various elements are used to interpret the aerial photographs and these elements may be tone color size shape association hue like that however this technique is we can say that becoming absolute but it still has it has the relevance with the advancement of satellite remote sensing the aerial photographs has lost its importance and at present day in india aerial photographs are done on a very special request by the government agency the agency which are involved for aerial photographs in india is survey of india national remote sorry national remote sensing agency and a agency based in kolkata aerial photographs are very useful in developing the stock map of a forest with the help of aerial photographs you can also develop land use land cover map change detection is also important aspect and it can also be done with the help of aerial photograph if someone is interested to develop the forest density aerial photographs can also be used for the forest type we can also use the aerial photographs aerial photographs is a old technology of remote sensing and gis with the development of satellite remote sensing this is this technique is becoming absolute however still it has the relevance thank you very much